Hello, everybody. We are so excited. We had to start recording because we want to just talk about Marilyn Monroe movies all the time. All the time. Uh, so we did. Two are we movies. introducing ourselves? Oh, I'm Theo Black. And I'm Sarah Black. And we there did we go. two Marilyn Monroe movies. Yes, uh, we're going to start with the with Niagara, which um, is. Uh, this wasn't a big movie week for me. I was a bit out of it for reasons. However, Niagara is definitely a very good movie. Um, and, oh, spoilers for Niagara and any other movie we mentioned will probably spoil a little bit. So be, yeah. be warned. Um, okay, so Niagara is about a couple who are honeymoon honeymooning at Niagara Falls, I think on the Canadian side. Uh, and while there, they meet another couple played by Marilyn Monroe and Joseph Cotton, who are troubled in their relationship and the fallout that comes from that, which includes a murder. Or two. Or two. <laughs> uh, and I think, I think I did okay there. Yeah, you did okay there, yeah. I'm getting, um, I'm getting better at this. Interesting to note, I didn't see this until right before we started recording. So we were kind of trying to do chronological order, but according to Wikipedia, her following two films after Niagara were Gentlemen Prefer Blondes and How to Marry a Millionaire. So really this one goes back earlier in the list, but that's fine because we were kind of clumping them by subject on. Oh yeah, yeah, we were, I thought, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense, huh? I didn't realize that. It's fine, we just clumped them fine. together. So this, we're going back in time now to before. So, which, which actually kind of puts an interesting yeah, in it's... on things because you know her character in Niagara is so different from these okay. kind she of had... stupid gold digging blondes she would play who had depth and and so on, but that at their like sentence level description, and yeah. here she is is kind of like a failed gold digging blonde, something a little more nuanced, low class, you know. Yeah, she um, she, she you know it's funny I didn't re realize it, but yeah, Niagara it's. She, Gentlemen for Fur Blonde, How to Marry a Millionaire, and Niagara all came out in the same year. Right. So that's... And this one came out first, and it's kind of her first big star vehicle. Um, and she's not really a dumb blonde in it, as you say, and that is nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was interesting, because when we were talking about Don't Bother to Knock, where she's the mentally unstable babysitter, I had mentioned that it's hard, it's hard to have her be unsympathetic. And as I was saying that last time, I was remembering, oh, wait, in Niagara, she plots um, her husband's murder with her lover. Yeah. But she's still sympathetic to it. Like, it's, yeah. It's, I would say Joseph, so she and Joseph Cotton are this very screwed up couple. Joseph Cotton seems to be suffering um, from being a war veteran. It's like, that's it could be briefly. yeah it could be ptsd but it, we don't have a, they didn't have a name for it then unless we're not doctors but it's yeah and he and marilyn monroe the characters they're not well matched she's younger and sexier and kind In of battle fatigue battle, battle fatigue battle. jill says there's there's also something called battle fatigue or it can be called I thought battle that fatigue. Is ptsd i think that's what they just used to call oh, it that's what they used to call it hm. yeah didn't know that um, sorry but so um, I've lost track of where I was. Um, I've ruined it. The other couple is played by Gene Peters and Max Showalter. Yes. Yeah, so um, Max Showalter. I would say that Joseph Cotton's character comes out better than Marilyn Monroe's character in the end because he does uh, save the Polly character. Yeah. Um, but kind of saves her from himself. So. At the same time, he kills Marilyn Monroe. So there's a so both of their characters are gray, I would say, where they're not just unmitigated evil. They're not. Yeah. You know, Marilyn Monroe seems to be trying to get out of a bad marriage in a very yeah. bad way, but he seems abusive. There's something very sad about her in this movie, too, that I really like. That one scene where they are at everyone's at the hotel the rainbow cottages or whatever it's called right. and marilyn monroe comes out in that pink dress and that's got like the cut out on her stomach yeah and she, her lips are just bright red the entire time and plays that uh song and just kind of slouches on the steps you know there's something 
very sad and tragic about her in that moment just a little yeah, yeah that I, I that stuck with me because this is my second time watching this yeah this was my first time watching it and you know i would agree that there is something kind of tragic about that moment and about her really both characters are tragic to me i didn't end with a great feeling of like one is worse or better than the other like Joseph Cotton, like it's, you know, you wonder like who is the, the culprit in their marriage, but it's kind of hard because like certainly Joseph Cotton is like, he seems to be a little bit older than her. He's definitely suffering battle fatigue or something. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, troubled, but like how much did she contribute to that? How much of it is just the circumstances? People didn't necessarily get a lot of help for that kind of thing in those days. It sort of depended. And the, but then in how she responds to it with plans to murder him is like, well, you know, maybe I would have felt completely on her side, except that she's plotting to kill him. So it's like there, there is, she gets a nuance in this. The story has a nuance that I right. like. And she gets a nuance in this that it's not completely missing from the dumb blonde roles. It's just that like, those roles are there's kind of she does more of those roles so there isn't really yeah. it doesn't feel like there's as much there well, they're whereas, not very deep the movies aren't very deep this is a movie that's trying to do a little more it feels like i don't know if it's just also because it touches on darker subject matter and we tend to like think of yeah I, I murder feel like, and so on as kind of deeper and more nuanced than getting married <laughs> we're going to talk about this with bus stop and how the fifties were a weird time for movies and potentially society at large, but definitely like Niagara is like technicolor pretty, but like it's rich shot really well. And like, it's, it's kind of more, it feels like, you know, we're going to, we'll talk about bus stop, but bus stop is like some aging studio execs idea of, you know, thought of a good idea. Like that's what right. they thought a good idea. And Niagara is like more to, it almost seems like Ni Niagara is more to like what the truth for some people might've been. Totally, There's something more, yeah. Totally, this, the, the mood matches the subject matter, which is I think a little what we were talking about with Bus Stop and some of these other 50s movies. And that's yeah. what I was saying about Gentlemen Prefer Blondes where you have Marilyn Monroe singing and dancing while men shoot each other in the heads as part right. of the dance number where it's like, takes you a moment to be like, and, and that's I really like dark. that match of tones but I, i'm not i'm not niagara it, the tone i'm not fits. sure it works story-wise whereas niagara like there is a tragic sad tone to it and it's a sad tragic sad story um i want to point out ray cutler um, played by max walter as the true villain of this film actually <laughs> since we're talking i liked um polly i thought her character was neat i don't she's kind of like the no the no nonsense and and not really like she's kind of she's gonna... fascinated by the Marilyn Monroe Joseph Cotton characters but she kind of recognized what she's seeing I think it's fascinating that in real life she was married to um um I mean I always mix uh people up so let me make sure she was married to um Howard Hughes right. I wanted to say Howard Hawks because he keeps he directed two of the films we watched but no Howard Hughes who was definitely an odd character so to see her in this movie matched up with such a like square annoying 50s man and to know that in real life the actress was actually like over a decade married to an eccentric rich man is kind of like interesting truth is more interesting than fiction really um but yeah um the the husband character ray is the worst <laughs> he is like he wants to take pictures of her in her bikini he's just like chomping at the bit to show off to his boss and do this and he doesn't believe anything she says and at the end of the movie like she's just stuck with him and it's like here's the true tragedy of the movie is that and then that's the odd you know that is the 50s of this movie is that you know at the end it's the dorky sexless couple that you know comes out fine while the more interesting screwed up couple is dead <laughs> Yeah, this is this is and this is kind of a part of why I like noirs. And we discussed this the other day where it's like in noirs, you got to do more interesting things sometimes as far as morality and like character work goes. But you have to kill them at the end. Yeah. <laughs> so like that's kind of what's happening in Niagara too. Niagara is it's not I don't know if that people would consider it a noir or not. I don't exactly know how that works. It's in Technicolor, which 
sort of I mean, maybe that makes it slightly like a new nouveau noir or something. Wikipedia, but Wikipedia is calling it a noir, therefore it must be a noir. But it did. Wikipedia also comments that it's in color when most of them aren't. Yeah, and like there's and see, so like this is a noir to me in that regard. In, in like in it has an interesting morality and it gets that interesting morality because it it, ha it kills the characters yeah. at the end, and I like that. And I didn't quite take away have the same takeaway that you did about. Um, uh, uh, Ray and and but he was uh, gaslighting so hard. You have to admit that, like, Polly is like, "Hey, these people are screwed up." I keep seeing him, and he's like, "It's all in your imagination, Dame." Like, well, he okay, so so he undercuts her. So hold on, I don't disagree. I just don't know the term. I think gaslighting is when like the person does it on purpose. You're right, you're right. I've I've, missed, I've even seen the movie Gaslighting. It is not I've gaslighting. Never, Oh, really? I've never seen it. Yeah. But, it's, so it's not gas it's 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 unintentional <laughs> gaslighting which yeah. is I mean it means he's not like a complete asshole. It just means that he's like to me I kind of liked both of them though Polly is definitely the stronger character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean she's there. She's on camera I mean, as, more. As she has a, more to she's do. stronger as a like the character isn't a, a stronger written character, but you mean just the the character she plays is a stronger person. I would say both actually yeah. like okay. I think I think Ray he's not underwritten he just literally isn't in the film as much so I yeah. don't know that they could have done as much with yeah, him but like, that's the thing you compare him to like Joseph Cotton's character and you're like oh he's been in the war he's jealous he you got it and with that guy you're like well he's a guy in the 50s well that's no but see here's here's the thing right. he's really into his job he's interested in climbing the corporate ladder he cares a lot about his work he's a dork he really Sorry, likes his... my cat is trying to to open the door and if he had thumbs we'd be in trouble he's at the doorknob sorry oh I'm, dear I'm, I'm... <laughs> chip chip is an adventurer <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh but no but so like he's a dork and he like he, he he you know he really loves his wife and like he's not really a le lech but he's like wants pictures of her in her bikini yeah. and it's like you know and he's like trying to to gussy up the boss and like she's kind of no nonsense and he's kind of goofy and so i yeah. kind of like that he doesn't really have as much to do and i guess it is a tragedy that she ends up with him in the end though i'm gonna like well, you think about like motions. there's a whole genre of films and a story. I should say a whole s story genre about the misery. I think of like Revolutionary Road um, is the title that comes to mind immediately. I haven't seen it, but, but I, I know what there's you're a lot about. of them. I feel like John Cheever's story. Well, no, those are more New York. That's not quite right. But you know, it's about these people just miserable with their suburban lives. And I feel like you know, ten years later. 15 years later that's that couple they're not the the they're not the people that get to be victorious at the end of the movie they're the ones that are like quietly dying in their two car home in a suburb somewhere it's just like the attitude about them and i personally am more for like that's miserable like i wouldn't want to be married to that guy and i don't want to be married to joseph cotton because he's a murderer and like i'm not saying like ultimately yes a murderer <laughs> For a second, is it's... worse than i was gonna say you, you gotta recover yourself here. no 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 ultimately a murderer is <laughs> worse, but i don't want to be married to that guy either <laughs> I, and and the thing Ray is, or I'm Roy or whatever his name is. Right. I'm not really any different in terms yeah. of like my belief about these things. Like I tend to. Also I'd want to be married to Polly the most out of any of these people. Really. God, probably me too. I'd, I'd be married to Marilyn Monroe. I just treat her better. I don't. I wouldn't want to. <laughs> Marilyn is too much for me. <laughs> too, I don't... too broken for you in this movie. Well, not even too broken, but like she's just she she's into fashion and she's into looking beautiful and it's like I'm a. I'm a yeah, I bear no, I look homeless that. sometimes like I'm just like <laughs> true that. Just, yeah like I'm that's I couldn't handle that anyways uh so like I think so yeah so Polly is kind of the more interesting character and I do like how Polly sort of interacts with Marilyn's character like Polly doesn't really look down at Marilyn which mm -hmm. often mm -hmm. happens with her characters even in Gentlemen Prefer Blonde and stuff like see they, they're not like mean about like Howard Hawks is not particularly mean about her character. No. But the other characters definitely look down at her, whereas Polly doesn't seem to really look no, down on her. She's she's she doesn't necessarily like she knows that she's cheating on her husband, but like she doesn't seem to like even that does like that prop that seems to worry her as mm -hmm. like sort of a proper housewife type that she seems to want to be. But like it doesn't she knows there's more going on. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure how intentional that is, but like 
I really appreciate that there's this like kind of feminine bond between the characters yeah. that I wouldn't normally put in a movie from the 50s by a male director and I'm sure a male writer and all of yeah. that. Um, do you need to go rescue a cat? I need to, hold on, let me mute myself. Oh gosh, she's yelling at, she's yelling at her cat. Not really, I mean, sort of. She's trying getting... to destroy my screen door. Um, Excellent. But like, there's an interesting femininity between those, feminine bond between those characters that feels a bit, not unique, but just, I wouldn't necessarily pick it out of the 50, a 50s movie by a male director, male writers, all that. So yeah, pausing real quick. Uh, but yeah, so that surprised me a little bit about that movie. But um, oh, and she's even it's she actually spends more time with the Joseph Cotton character, and even then, it's like she she's sympathetic to him, but also there is an interesting scene where she starts out um, kind of on his I don't want to say on his side, but she she starts out very like understanding. And the more he talks, the more she realizes like that this is a, a bigger issue, like that there's more going on. And that, that's the scene where um, he has broken the, after the scene where Marilyn is just gorgeous and sad and tragic as she, she plays that song. Yeah. Joseph Cotton's character hurts his hand breaking the um, record. record. Some of those, those records could be really thick. Um, I'm not surprised. So, she, so uh, Polly goes to wrap his hand up and he just starts rambling and talking and i love joseph cotton he is in uh, citizen kane and he's in the third man obviously he and orson wells were friends uh, well not obviously but because he and orson wells were friends um yeah. and i feel like i've seen him in another one or two things i can't remember but i just always like him when i see him and he's in it he's got it, and this goes back to me talking about you know wanting to see marilyn monroe paired with interesting men by which largely i mean characters i, I interestingly written characters i don't want to like be reverse sexist or whatever but you know right. and the characters we see her with and gentlemen for her blondes and stuff like that are very like fifth they, they are actually the ray characters is who we tend to see her with yeah. but in this she's you know with joseph cotton who is is a more interesting man visually in his way but also his character is, is to me more interesting than yeah yeah totally i totally agree with that well we haven't talked a lot about this because we focused on marilyn and and the characters but i do want to point out that there are some really neat shots in this yeah the the tower that the murder happens in and the shots of the bells and stuff like that's just some really cool stuff and the way they're doing the lighting it's i feel like because it's Technicolor and it doesn't quite look the same, like Technicolor is a specific look to me. Mm -hmm. And like now we don't, like in some ways I almost wish we still had Technicolor because it sometimes looks better than the stuff we have nowadays. Yeah. But like, I really like the use of shadows and light in this Technicolor movie. Like weirdly it's, it is a noir because it has that look, but it's Technicolor. So I, I just wonder how many movies there are like that. Like um, Big Trouble at uh, Black. Black. Rock. rock yeah um uh is a similar movie where like i think it's technicolor but it's got this kind of grainy gritty look to it it's not quite a noir it's almost more of a western even though it is noir kind of in style like i this technicolor movies are movies that i really well i think he likes because you you watch a lot of noir and black and white and those look beautiful i mean there's some some stuff they do with lighting that's stunning you know yeah. where um i think it's a big combo or something it's a, it's a movie that's plot is like not that exciting but the visuals of just there's a woman running down a hallway and it's lit and then it's dark and lit and you just see her figure coming in and out and stuff like that that noirs right. do is really stunning but then it's you know variety is the spice of life right it's it's yeah. interesting to see totally yeah these gorgeous saturated colors while people are getting it makes you think of pinups because pinups are often yeah kind of saturated it makes you think of stuff like that you know it yeah it's, it's almost it's, a little more sexy which is what i was talking about with out of the past last week is like you know black and white is very sophisticated and elegant to me yeah but color you know color films stuff is more sexual to me yeah no i, I agree it definitely it does have the lighting that's beautiful like noirs do but it is in color and 
you know, more than uh, the, the asphalt jungle where, you know, mm -hmm. we were just, I mean, we're still mostly in one location in this movie, but yeah. it is not one room. We're just in one location. Mm -hmm. And so like, they really do a lot with that. And Marilyn like is more sexy yeah, in I mean, this than she is in that for sure. Well, and I was talking about um, when we talked about Adam Pass, which is the classic um, black and white style noir, like how yeah. there was, n I need more sexual tension to explain some of the relationship stuff. And then you look at this and like Marilyn and Monroe is just dripping sex and um sorry a cat almost really it's very exciting here in my place so she's just dripping you know she, she is what i needed for some of those noirs is that yeah. you know and joseph cotton's you know very clearly in her thrall and and wants to possess her and and that to me makes more sense than what i see in those 40s noirs yeah no and i think and we've already yeah yes and yeah. i totally that totally makes sense to me and i think the way this movie plays out, it really, and maybe because it's slightly later, you know, than some of the 40s noirs, mm -hmm. there's probably just more sex in noirs from the 50s anyways. Right. Totally, totally. And um, so, so mm -hmm. it really, that is such a part of it in a way that normally annoys me, like in some of the noirs in the 40s and just movies in the 40s and 30s, there'll be all these kind of like male characters who are older with these younger women. And it's all about like them having enough mojo um, to like, you know, do they have enough mojo or virality for this younger woman they're with? Do they have the right sort virility, of sex, I think is virility right. for this, enough sex for this younger woman? And mm -hmm. it, uh, I get so like put off by it because it's like, you are 20 years older than her. Like yeah. you got to deal with the, the, the problems you have <laughs> and stop obsessing over it. If you were that worried about it, find someone who's more your speed. Anyways, I, I get so annoyed by some of that. Yeah. But in this, in this particular movie, even though I noticed that and it kind of made me, you know, got me for a second, it really doesn't bother me because it's, it kind of makes more sense. Like I can't quite tell how much older Joseph Cotton is than Marilyn Monroe, Monroe either. Mm -hmm. Monroe. Uh, anyways so it's like it doesn't yeah so it works better in this movie than it does for a lot of the movies that I've seen right. from this era where it's like yeah. I get it you're an older man and she's a younger woman I don't care anymore I, <laughs> yeah. it was kind of it's occasionally it's interesting and mostly it's not <laughs> and going back to the filmmaking the Wikipedia and I, I I question this a little bit but it talks about how this is the longest walk recorded on film is uh Marilyn Monroe's trying to get away from the Joseph Cotton and it is it is mesmerizing. It's a little hmm. salacious or gross or whatever that it's it's about a woman trying to escape death and we've turned it into this like, ooh, you know, watch Marilyn sexy walk for her. Yeah. <laughs> sexy walk away from her death. Um, the other yeah. thing, that, thing that you pointed out is that Vertigo has some similar. Oh yeah, I've, I'd forgotten that. Yes, no, you this- You get credit I... for that. I totally, I'm very curious how, like, if Hitchcock was influenced by it or not, because it really seems like... Yeah, there's a tower, there's a gorgeous blonde, there's yeah. murder, there's... There's troubled uh, male, yeah. there's troubled well, men. I mean, just stories, just, you know, there's a lot of things out in the zeitgeist, I guess I want to say. Yeah, I'm wondering if you're, you've got the longest... The, the longest... Movies, yes. I was wondering about the longest walk thing. Like, I wonder if a part of it is supposed to be the juxtaposition of like here, juxtaposition of this being like, here's sexy Marilyn Monroe and we know what's about to happen to her. And it's sort of trying to like challenge the audience to like not feel, you know, because I didn't quite get wigged out by it, but I sort of mm -hmm. see your point that it is a bit salacious. And it's like, you know, I wonder if, if the attempt was to be like, here's this, you know, beautiful, sexy Marilyn Monroe and she's going to her death and she's still sexy and beautiful and she's going to die. Yeah. You know, so it's like, I wonder. Yeah, no, you know. I don't, it's more, it seems like there's some marketing around it that probably, but within the film itself, I mean. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I think we kind of already covered Marilyn, like I think her acting and I think she gives it a depth. I think she's beautiful yeah. and sad and charming. I, and I still don't quite understand people saying she's a bad actress. She's definitely, you know, she's probably not someone who could play every kind of role because she really does have a breathy quality and it just doesn't lend itself to certain but that's roles. That's like Cary Grant couldn't play every kind of role. I yeah, mean, so like, it's like, I mean, if you really 
value the ability to I think to she play got stuck with her, her roles being a dumb blonde and, and people started thinking that was her reality and that. But like, that's... yeah, but this, between this and like, um, don't bother to knock, like she's really good in both of these. You know, I don't know mm -hmm. which I like more either in terms of the movie itself or the acting that she gives, but like, yeah, she, she gives great performances in both. So yeah. and Joseph Cotton in this gives a really good performance too. Yeah. So, yeah. That's pretty much what I got to say, though. It's it's a good movie. I think so. It's, yeah, it's one of my favorite of the Marylands. I'm I'm um. It is hard to compare it to Don't Bother to Knock because they're so similar but different. I'm. Yeah. Uh, the only movie la left that we're gonna watch some like and hop. I've seen that already. I haven't seen The Misfits, and I'm I'm hoping that is a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've haven't seen some like and hop in forever. But yeah, The Misfits too. I'm curious about. I wonder if I get to see her do more nuanced more. stuff like this. Yeah. 